welcome to this edition of All About Hopkinton. I'm your host, Mary Arnott. All About Hopkinton is the HCAM show created to bring you information about people and organizations in and around our wonderful community. The show today brings you important information and an update about a very special restoration project and the dedicated people who are making it happen. My guests are Kathleen Kilduff and Curran Leahy Lonegro. They're here representing the Lauren Anderson Field Restoration Project and will give us an important update. Welcome Kathleen and welcome Curran. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad that you could take time to do the show with me today. This is such a wonderful project and such an important, meaningful project for folks that have been in our community a long time and remember Lauren Anderson, and for those who are new and need to know about her and her special sparkle. So Curran, maybe we'll start with you, since you were very close to Lauren. Mm -hmm. Why don't you give a little bit of background on why you're here? Sure. So um, we're here to talk about the project and to talk about Lauren. Um, what our project has consisted of is really like two main goals. Um, one, uh, because we are approaching the 25th anniversary of Lauren's death, um, to remember Lauren and remember everything that she stood for. And two, to restore the softball field that's currently named after Lauren, to really bring it up to the caliber that um, we all believe that she deserves and the caliber that we believe the community deserves. Um, so that's really the two, the two goals that our project has had. Um, mm -hmm. And we'll talk more today about the fact that um, we're, we're really excited to be here to talk about um, that we think we've, we've done a good job of reaching those goals, um, but we have a little bit more to do. So um, I'm here with Kathy because Lauren was my best friend. Uh, we met when we were uh, quite young, and we were best friends really th all through um, junior high and through high school. Uh, for those who don't know Lauren, and um, there are plenty of people in and around the community that, that knew her and still remember her very well, but obviously there's plenty of people in this community that never had the opportunity and the honor of meeting her. Um, Lauren was a cheerleader. She was a softball player. She was like Kathy's size, but she was the MVP of pretty much every team that she was on. So she was an excellent athlete. Um, and she was also um, an equestrian um, and a very accomplished one at that. Um, unfortunately, when we were juniors, when she was 16 years old, she passed away um, in a horseback riding accident. Yes, uh, you know, some events you always remember as if they happened yesterday, and that's one that certainly I, I remember mm -hmm. and how it affected our community. Uh, and I'm just so glad that her memory lives on, her sparkle lives on, and your dedication is making something happen that really needs to happen, something mm -hmm. that's very important. Mm -hmm. So Kathy, why don't you tell us a little bit about where the project uh, stands today, what the status is and what's been done and what's forthcoming. So from <clears throat> the onset, we, uh, went, once we determined uh, the viability of the project, that there really was a need for upgrading the field and marrying the two and honoring Lauren at the same time, mm -hmm. uh, we uh, built a team of people and it turned out that uh, for the fundraising arm of the project we ended up with 22 sub teams um, and the representation and the enthusiasm of the people involved have been incredible so the people that were on the team represented the school represented the classmates and the teammates uh, the family and friends the uh, horse community the church community and the community organizations, Parks and Rec, um, Little League, the 26.2 Foundation, and the Boosters Club. Every single um, organization that I mentioned had representation on this team, and everyone went off and figured out the best possible way to do the fundraising so that we indeed could achieve our goal. Sometimes it was uh, in monetary donations, sometimes it was in in-kind services. So. I am pleased, I'm th there are no words, I'm thrilled to tell you that our mission has been accomplished. We have achieved the funding that we need and the project will move from the fundraising phase to the construction implementation phase. I would like to talk about later on you know, when things will be happening on the field, but I'd like to encourage everyone to come and see what their donations um, will have resulted in. So it's been extraordinary. I think you know one of the one of the coolest things um, 
as Kathy said, is you know the the group started as um, you know really with Kathy to be frank, um, but you know she rallied this group of people that did have primary connections with Lauren, um, but then tangential folks joined in, um, like again Parks and Rec. The the folks that were involved from Parks and Rec, as an example, they didn't know Lauren, um, but they quickly came to so appreciate who she was and what this project was all about and, and why there was significant value in acknowledging her, that they became champions for Lauren and it really resonated with them. And then, you know, as they went out to ask people or as I went out to ask people to contribute, even if those people that were asked didn't know Lauren, again, they ha just, we were able to create a personal connection um, for these folks. And so even people who didn't know this wonderful woman um, from 25 years ago felt personally connected and invested in the project. And I, didn't, I think that's really one of the coolest things for me as someone who feels so passionate about how good she was as an individual to see that even people who didn't know her are um, connecting with her now. And, and not only do the schools use the field, but Parks and Rec, um, mm -hmm. their um, events and teams use the field as well. It's used by like 300 different people. But I'm so happy you brought this up because we were invited to come to the Women's Rec League Championship game, which is part of Parks and Rec. So uh, Lauren's sister Amy and I went and we just gave a little pitch about the project and Amy told some personal stories about what it was like to be Lauren's big sis. And she talked about the fact that Lauren was such a good equestrian that she wanted to go to the Olympics. It was just the personal side of, of who Lauren really was. Um, and when we were done, you know, our mantra this whole time has been um, always remember to watch for the sparkle the spirit, the love. And literally, we went back to the bleachers and uh, one of your classmates sent me a uh, photograph of a rainbow over Kerrigan Field at the end of the summer. Now, I've lived here for 45 years. <laughs> I haven't ever seen that before. But I feel that um, her sparkle really is her legacy and it goes on and on. All you need to do is look for it. I just think it's wonderful that you're keeping her memory alive and for people who, you know, like you say, didn't know her, young kids are at the school, they see the name Lauren Anderson Field. I think it's so important to have that story out there of mm -hmm. who she was and why this community felt like she deserved to have something named after her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this field was very important in that. So um, thank you. I'm, <laughs> I'm just thrilled. Um, so you say, the, uh, Kathy, that the donation phase, if you will, is kind of over. But if um, people want to still donate, maybe to a maintenance fund or something, is that a possibility? Um, yes. I, um, right now, the Boosters Club is, is the intake source for mm -hmm. us. Um, and I, we're working on the detail of how we can indeed, should someone want to donate, um, how we can continue that. So that'll be part of our messaging going forward. Our initial intent for the project was laser focused, eight weeks, mm -hmm. get this done and uh, raise the money, move it on to the implementation uh, phase and be ready for opening day in the spring. So this wasn't on purposely designed to be an ongoing you know, pr uh, project, but certainly if someone wants to donate, um, we will include that in our go forward messaging. Yeah, because you're gonna tell us now about what's involved in the restoration and mm -hmm. there are many really good things and those things are gonna need some maintenance and upkeep over the years. Right. So I'm gonna encourage people that if they haven't had the opportunity to donate in the early phase, they can still do something uh, if they'd like to and that'll be held on to for the future. So. Great, thank you. All right, so we're starting implementation, which is a really good thing. Yes. Mm -hmm. And what can you tell us about the parts, of what's going to be in the implementation phase of the restoration? So the upgrade opportunities that we clearly identified early on were dugouts. These, mm -hmm. these students, players, right now they just sit behind the cage. There are no dugouts, mm -hmm. so that's very exciting. Um, and then we would like to uh, build bat racks and benches within the, within the dugouts for the players, which again, they don't have today. Um, we also are, ha are looking to um, purchase windscreens and for the dugout and the outfield 
definitely a primary focus of our project is to refurbish the scoreboard. Um, structurally, it's sound. It's just that it needs to be brought up to date, just like the field. We'll bring the sparkle back to her scoreboard and, and the field. Fence toppers, um, for safety purposes, we're purchasing. And um, the tree work and the landscaping are huge because, as you clearly said earlier or at the last interview, the, the trees are encroaching on the field. They lose 20 balls a game. So that's the primary catalyst for uh, all of the work. We start with the tree work. And in October, the implementation, the first thing that will be done uh, will be the tree work. And that's been an in-kind donation from American Climbers and Rich Yerowitz, which is huger than huge because if that wasn't going to be done, all of the other work would be for naught. Mm -hmm. um, so that will happen early in, in October. And then by the end of the month, our dugouts will be built. So the two primary um, catalysts for the whole project uh, will have been achieved by the end of this month. So come see it. Um, and then in March, the remaining items that we're purchasing, the, and so the scoreboard will be up, updated the ble a new set of bleachers, um, all of the remaining items will have been purchased and ready for a March uh, implementation, as I said earlier, to be ready for our opening day. And in addition, in the spring, we're going to have a formal uh, rededication or unveiling for all of the team. Every, I can't even begin to tell you the hard work that, um, that Curry and, and her, the classmates and the teammates have gone with social media and Facebook and reconnecting, they've gone over and above. They're really the reason uh, this project has been so successful. In addition to the, the town um, organizations that have contributed significantly, either through a donation or a purchase of a windscreen, you know, for instance. So it's, we're excited, if you can't tell, <laughs> we're, we're really excited about the whole thing. So eight, October and March mm -hmm. are our big dates. Well, by the time the show airs, because we're a little bit ahead of all the implementation starting, but it will be underway. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, as you say, for next spring, which is actually spring of 2020, I'll throw the date out so when folks watch this, they'll know. Um, hope to be have everything up and ready. So there must be an awful lot of work and people in the background that's pulling all this design and items together for it. You know, thank you for, for calling that out. Um, people have appeared generously and offered their time and their services, and Ryan Fowler is, is one of those people. One day my phone rang, and it was Ryan, and he said, um, I would love to be a part of this project. I'm a construction man project manager, and I thought, whoa, where did you come from? Welcome mm -hmm. aboard. So uh, he is managing phase two of the project, which is the implementation. He's built the timeline. He's built a, his team. He's negotiated for best price on all of these items, and he'll do the actual build um, of the dugouts as well. So he and uh, Rich Yerowitz have mm -hmm. been extraordinary with their in-kind donations. I just can't say it well enough. Well, many caring people like them don't don't look for any kind of recognition when they're doing things. They're just happy to be involved. But I'm glad you mentioned their names, and I'm very happy that they are involved and step forward for you. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of the uh, project getting started, uh, and they're leading it, and um, I'm hoping that you'll keep us you know, updated on when things are happening, uh, certainly to have HCAM maybe on board when you have the grand opening or <laughs> celebration, or I don't know, Kern, if a lot of uh, your classmates are planning, if you have sort of a date in mind and are letting people know. Um, well, we don't, we have, we have many things still being planned. So, you know, even though we are saying that our fundraising is done and we're really proud to say that, mm -hmm. um, we do still have some events that are planned. You know, for example, there's a horse show coming up at which we're going to, you know, pass the boot mm -hmm. um, and um, ask for some additional donations at that. Um, we certainly plan some sort of recognition event for all of the people who, you know, have contributed to date and, and want to be able to come together to, to talk about Lauren, remember Lauren, remember her, her sparkle. Mm -hmm. um, so there are other events that we have planned. 
Um, we don't have a ton of details on those because we have been so laser focused on the fundraising for the last eight weeks. But definitely <laughs> exciting things to come um, even before we have the, the big unveiling of the field. But certainly we recognize that this was not a small group of people that um, is making this field happen. Um, it's been a large group. I mean, the donations ranged from large, large donations to very small donations, but they all got us over you know, that, um, that line. And so we want to make sure that people are able to participate in celebrating it with us. So who is keeping this all of the information together about these other events and things and how you, what's the organization behind that? I mean, that sounds like there's still a lot that you have planned in addition to the restoration. It's recognition events and stuff. So how, how are you doing all that, pulling that together? Is there I actually think at, at this point, the majority of the, you know, events and, and, and fundraising, mm -hmm. targeted fundraising, um, are completed. But Curran's right. The, the horse show um, that we'll be attending is in October. So obviously things roll over. The other event is um, the youth ministry team at mm -hmm. St. John's Church is doing a special project and it's called Sparkle for Lauren. Oh. And what they will be doing is literally raising, uh, um, they'll be doing, I wanna say manual labor, but they'll mm -hmm. be doing field cleanup. They couldn't even begin to do any of this before this tree work um, got done. But what we think we'll do is utilize their strength and their elbow grease um, in the springtime. So some of the, because that's when it'll be needed. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm thrilled to death about that. It's, a, it's going to be a wonderful project for these young people. So that's the second thing. Then we were trying to plan um, an alumni and varsity softball game, but we ran out of weather <laughs> and we hit Triple E. So yeah. that's looking, they're looking to do that um, in the springtime as well. And there was one more event. I'm going blank on that, but um, it was things like that that necessitated us to be able to have fluidity around when we could execute the event. Mm -hmm. so. Well, that other event may come back to, but when and where is the horse show? It's, oh boy. I don't know. Is it, is it taking place in, uh, in Hopkington? No. no. It's, oh, okay. It's, I, I think it was where uh, Lauren probably rode in that, with that community. Well, it'll probably know. be out. Uh, we'll talk about yeah. um, maybe some of the, if the web page or social media that you're using, and I'm sure all these events will be uh, published. Yeah. Because um, there's too much to remember. You're mm -hmm. pulling so much together. Right. I just, mm -hmm. yeah. I'm amazed at what you've been doing and then and all of it, the way well, it's happening. And so. to answer your, your question also, Mary, I mean, uh, you know, Kathy has given a lot of credit to what Lauren's classmates have done, and, mm -hmm. and that has been really spectacular to see is, um, you know, as her best friend, I remember who she was, and I remember the events, obviously. Um, but to see and hear from people who still 25 years later say, I remember her, I remember that, and, you know, that matters to me is, you know, has been, has been really touching. Um, so Kathy gives us a lot of credit, but Kathy needs a ton of credit um, because really, again, she's the one that got this group together and said, we, we should do, we should really do this. I think we can do this. She was the, the sort of the rallying cry. Um, and really it's been Kathy and um, a group of neighborhood friends. So those that, you know, lived um, near Lauren um, when she was growing up are the ones that really have been the project core team driving it. So they're the ones keeping track of um, what are our project timelines, how much have we fundraised, uh, what articles are we going to put where, how do we come and talk to you. So it's really been Kathy that has you know, driven that and, um, and some of the neighborhood friends. It truly takes a, a village and in this case you know it is Hopkinton small town with a big heart because they they did it then 25 years ago when Lauren first uh, died. They raised funds to purchase the original scoreboard. And here we are, 25 years later, grassroots effort, small town with a big heart still, mm -hmm. and we're doing it all over again. That's the true messaging. There's something about the, the grassroots effort and the passion of people in the town. Yep. Well, it's one thing that folks who do remember and were part of her life and she was part of their lives in the past, uh, but it's 
even I think even more important now that everyone who's new to town and who's gone through the school will see how Hopkinton doesn't forget. Mm -hmm. And when we stay together, we're a community. And if you become part of this community, you are really part mm -hmm. of this community. Mm -hmm. So I, that's what just pleases me the most is that all of this is happening with so many people, some who knew Lauren and some, you know, many who didn't but mm -hmm. want to be part of it. I think that's mm -hmm. just wonderful. Well, and the benefit, you know, the, the kids that are using that are going to use Lauren's field moving forward, mm -hmm. they will have never known Lauren. And that's that's okay. Um, that's wonderful. You know, it's wonderful that her legacy really is continuing. And again, that's something that really excites all of us, which is to say, hey, we're recognizing Lauren, but look at what we're doing for the next generation of, you know, female athletes um, who really deserve to have a field of this caliber. You know, it's um, it's no one's fault. But it's a shame that the field is in the condition that it's in now. And I think we're just really proud to be able to say that the varsity team, you know, this coming spring is going to be playing on a field that's worthy of Lauren, but worthy of them. And, you know, same the thing for the, you know, Parks and Rec League. They deserve that this field that they will have going forward. So um, I think everyone that contributed should be super proud that that's what um, we're giving to the town. Very well said, Karen. Very well said. And um, I know it sounds so simple when we're just sitting here talking about it, but there's so much that had to happen, and there's so much that's going to go on, and so many people involved. Um, but we're just kind of trying to summarize so we can get the message out there of what has happened and what is going to happen. Yep. So um, do you think there's any important points that we may have rushed over or we haven't talked about? Um, is there a web page and what kind of social media are you using to keep things moving along? Do we want to mention those as well? Um, sure, I think there's a, a few resources um, that are available. Um, certainly, you know, we'll be sharing information with HCAM, so mm -hmm. um, people can go to the HCAM website to get more information. We do have a Facebook page, the Lauren Anderson Field Restoration Project. Excellent. It's a mouthful, <laughs> um, but if you type Lauren Anderson, you'll probably find it. Um, and on there, we've um, we've been doing fundraising updates to date, um, and we'll continue to do implementation updates there as well. So please feel free to join the Facebook page. Um, it will be Hop News. Yes. Um, we'll have had information, um, and the Hopkinton Independent right. as well. We'll be providing um, a messaging. The Lauren Anderson Project hit their goal, so mm -hmm. that whole update will be provided to all of the media that we've been working with. And our intent, once the um, project implementation gets going, we want to go and take pictures and just keep keep it out there, you know, that yes, indeed, here's what your kind donation actually um, has yielded. Um, so we'll, we'll be doing that. And then comes, then I think the holidays will happen. And then come spring, we will give information about the unveiling and the rest, the other other information around what's going to be happening and when it's going to be happening as far as the rededication. Just the one other thing, if mm -hmm. I may, about the benefit of this project, we're very proud that um, so many people um, made their donation and contributed in any way that they could to the success of our project. Um, I feel that. Yes, indeed, we're honoring Lauren in a really special way 25 years later. And yes, indeed, we're honoring both the community, the, the, the students of today, and uh, by bringing back that sparkle to Lauren's field, this, this badly needed upgrade will now be um, executed. But I also think the, the happy surprise that is um, me, heartfelt, I think, to our team is that, as you said, Kern, the young people of today um, now know the backdrop, the context behind mm -hmm. the words Lauren Anderson. And they, I hope, my, my hope is that they're going to say, I wonder what was so special about her. Why are these people coming back 25 years and doing something? So that's one thing. And then the varsity and JV teams are having their own fundraising effort this winter. Oh, that was the fourth one. That was the fourth yeah. one. You the remember, fourth one. Yes. And what they're doing is running uh, uh, softball clinics for the Hopkinton Little League girls, the eight-year-olds and nine-year-olds. And how much fun is that going to be for them 
these eight-year-olds to have one of the varsity softball players mm -hmm. teach them something. With the money that the varsity and JV teams raise, they're going to purchase a plaque, a Lauren Anderson Sparkle plaque, and they're going to be putting it in their soon-to-be dugout so that every one of the players, when they go in, they back to their dugout and sit, sit down, they remember her sparkle, her spirit, mm -hmm. and her love. And to me, that's, that was one of the uh, wonderful achievements mm -hmm. of the project as well, that her legacy is now carried on to the next generation and those to come. So, And I think it's, it's important to, to note with that awesome story that that was, again, like completely um, unsolicited grassroots from the players yeah. themselves. They heard, you know, we had been working with their coach to understand what are their needs, mm -hmm. what are, what's the team's needs. Um, but the players learned about the project, they heard about Lauren, and they were personally motivated yeah. to say, we as a team want to do something, and what is it that we can do because she seems like a really special person, um, you know, so how can we get involved? So that for me was the, I think the, the neatest part yeah. is that this wasn't a suggestion from a grown-up. Um, <laughs> this was something that the, the girls themselves said, like, we really want to do something and here's our, here's our idea. Well, it's, um, it's coming along, but they're going to be key milestones, so I hope you'll let us know when we get the HCAM news out there to keep everybody updated or come back on the All About Hopkinton show or a newsreel or something so that as things move along, we're right there in it with you and keeping everybody aware. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you again, Kathy and Kern, for your leadership and involvement with the Lauren Anderson Field Restoration Project. I appreciate you both for being on the show today. To my audience, if you aren't already involved, I hope that this show has motivated you to support the Lauren Anderson Field Restoration Project and keep involved with the updates. For more information about All About Hopkinton, go to hcam.tv. And remember, if you or someone you know would like to share their sh uh, story on our show, please email us and maybe you'll see them here. I'm Mary Arnott and thank you for watching All About Hopkinton.